Good morning, everybody. It's Friday morning. This is Pastor Rex. And uh, this week, we've been talking about understanding the Word. And we've kind of looked at the process of understanding uh, uh, the Word of God. We've looked at some principles of interpreting the Word. Um, and, and so as we've looked at some of these topics, today I want to look at our attitude toward the Word of God. Because, you know, if our attitude isn't right, we are probably not even going to open the book to read it. And so I want us to look today at eight attitudes toward the Word of God that affect, you know, our use of the Word of God. Now, the first attitude that I think is pretty common is really the, uh, the magic good luck book perspective on the Bible. Now, that's where maybe you, you know, carry a New Testament uh, in your coat pocket. You never read it, but you figure, you know, if somebody shoots at you, it'll always take the, the bullet for you, okay? Or you put the book on your coffee table, and it looks great, and you think, well, that's going to be a blessing on our house. And so you put the Bible out there, but you never read it and it just collects dust. And so when we look at, at the Bible as sort of a, a, a magic good luck book, uh, we tend not to really get serious about reading it. But there's a second attitude toward the Bible that I think can be equally as destructive. And uh, that is a, a matter of not believing the book. You know, uh, some call this a, 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 an attitude of rationalism. And when we come to this idea of rationalism, we, we are people who are rational, but when we are rationalistic, we tend to place our mind above the scriptures, and whenever we come to a problem passage, we blame the scriptures and we just say, I'm smarter than this book. Well, that can be destructive because then we never really deal or wrestle with the issues that are in front of us. We just assume, well, I'm superior to this book, and we're done with it. So the attitude of, of a rationalistic view of, of Scripture can actually be destructive to, uh, to our faith. Now, again, that doesn't mean we shouldn't be rational. But in, as we are rational, we accept this as the revelation of God, but then we are rational and reasonable as we interpret that, as we looked at the other day. Uh, the third attitude that, that often comes is... Uh, uh, prioritizing tradition over scripture. And when we prioritize, uh, tra that's hard to say, when we prioritize tradition over scripture, um, you know, we, we tend to look at, well, what are the traditions that we have received? And if they don't agree with scripture, well, the traditions take priority. And so we end up devaluing the Word of God through our traditions. In fact, Jesus warned the Pharisees about their prioritizing of traditions. Now, sometimes we say, oh, well, certain groups, you know, they have traditions and they devalue the Word. But even as Christians, you know, uh, we can, can value our traditional interpretation of a passage. And instead of looking at it deeply, we just sort of accept a traditional interpretation and then we're done and we dust our hands and we get on to the next verse that we want to uh, uh, deal with. So we need to be careful of this prioritizing of tradition over scripture. Number four is when we prioritize mystical experience over scripture. Now, that's the, the type of attitude where we say, you know, my mystical experience is more important than what this word says. And what happens with, with Christians in many cases is we begin to seek mystical experiences instead of truth. And it is the truth of God's word that's going to transform us. You know, I often make the, the, uh, the statement that uh, the word of God, inspired by the spirit of God, will transform the people of God. And so, uh, instead of depending on mystical experience, you know, we need to wrestle with this word. And at times I've talked with people who have said, you know, well, I had my mystical experience and I don't care what the Bible says. So we need to be careful that we don't devalue the, the word of God by our own religious or mystical experiences. Number five, uh, similar to that, is where we value our personal uh, experience or preference over scripture. And uh, we uh, uh, tend to look at our preferences and that becomes the primary means of deciding whether we're going to read it. 
and maybe our own desires get in the way. You know, our desires can be more important. So we may say, well, I don't feel like reading this book today. And I feel like doing, uh, doing something else. And our preferences begin to overwhelm our desire for the Word of God. And so we just don't get into it. It might be a lack of sleep. Uh, it might be a desire for too much fun. Uh, it might be too much activity or too much work. But whatever we prefer can get in the way of really interacting with the Word of God or seriously interacting with it. Now, the sixth thing is the attitude of the insufficiency of Scripture. And with this sixth attitude, we say, well, this just isn't enough. And when that is our attitude, we try to add to this Word. And so people will take other religious books and they'll say, well, this is of an equal level with the Bible. And look, we've added this book, and sometimes groups will add three or four or five books uh, and, and say, these are all of equal authority. Well, what we do is we get equally confused in that process. And so this Word of God is, is rich enough to bless you for a lifetime. And so this Word is sufficient. We don't need to add to it. But that brings us to the seventh attitude towards the, the Word of God is not only are we not to add to this Word, the Bible says we're not to subtract from it. Now, I call this seventh attitude the pick-and-choose attitude. And it's like, okay, I read through the Bible, I like this, and I don't like that. And it's almost like, you know, you metaphorically tear that page out of your Bible and ignore it. Or you say, well, well, this one is too violent and I don't understand that. Well, tear it out and don't pay any attention to it. And so the pick and choose method uh, is really subtracting from the Bible. And both of those, either adding or subtracting, will get in the way of us really understanding the Bible and letting it speak to our life. Now, that brings us to the last uh, attitude towards the Bible, and that is prioritizing the Bible alone. We're saying it is sufficient, it is the eternal Word of God, it is inerrant, it is infallible, it is inspired, all of those eyes we look at that one day, okay? Uh, but when we have that attitude, we say, I want to know this book. I want to see this book at its depth. I want to have the Spirit of God speak to me through this book so that my life will be transformed and I will begin to reflect more closely the image of Jesus. Now, I think when we begin to read the word with that attitude, God begins to do a work in our heart. So look at your own heart and ask yourself, what is my attitude toward this book? And uh, I hope if you've got a bad attitude, you will adopt a good attitude. Anyway, have a good day, have a good weekend. Bye for now. God bless.